There we go. Yeah, oh, perfect. <laughs> hey, darling, good seeing you. Hi, good seeing you. Much better oh. background oh. <laughs> with you. Uh, I just got the mountains. You just have a bunch of, you know, war hero medals behind you. That's it. Nothing big. <laughs> a little bit of blame. Just a bunch of medals. <laughs> good to see you. Great seeing you. What are those medals for? Um, for my time in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Is that anything specific? That are they all for different missions? Um, the only thing that I care about that's up there is actually my combat action wings with three gold stars. Um, everything else looks pretty, but the rest I don't really care about. Okay. Thing, <laughs> combat action wings, that's what matters. Yeah, you know how those pesky awards could be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it's great to see you. So today's a big day for us, right? We got our, our, our unbreakable line that launched. Uh, how much, how many people have just reached out to you? Your poster now is outside and inside every GNC in America and soon to be, I think, every military installation in the world. No, it's huge. I mean, it's incredibly special for me. Um, most importantly, because of what it represents. Merging vets and players has been a staple in my life, especially my recovery and, and what I'm looking forward to do later on in life. Uh, so for me to be a part of something a community that's willing to give back to MVP and make that a priority, that's huge. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a little surreal to see my face everywhere. But uh, more importantly, you know, behind all of it, just the community, the heart, the drive, the passion, MVP. Well, you know, you already posed naked out in the desert, you know, for the SPM body issue. So, and it's funny because somebody on Twitter was like, really, that's the photo you're going to use? I'm like, yeah, that's the photo we're going to use. This woman is proud of her scars. That's the fucking point. Absolutely. I mean, for me, don't be wrong. I mean, I hid that whole thing from my grandparents for the longest time. But at the end of the day, my whole excuse for it was my scars tell stories. And, and it's nothing that I should ever be ashamed of. And everything, again, every scar tells, I mean, just depicts what I've been through. Um, so for me, I'm not ashamed of any of that. So blast it out there, Jay. <laughs> Put it all over the world if you want. How, how many sur surgeries have you had now? 46. 46 surgeries. That's unreal. And that's, and, and take this the right, there's something to be proud of, right? That I think most people, I mean, hell, I've had 15 or 16, whatever, and Certainly not 46, um, but a lot of people would have cashed it in a long time ago. Yours are like, a lot of people aren't able to handle that. And every time you call me with another one, we're almost like, oh yeah, all right, that number's going up. How wild is this? You're just different. No, I, I mean, I don't know. I think that's what it all comes down to. It's just, we're trying to like depict to everybody that no matter what, like what makes us different you know, the, the adversities that we face, that makes us special. We should be proud of it going through anything and everything. When, you're, when your helicopter went down, were you conscious? What point did you lose consciousness? Uh, the moment that I told myself that I wasn't going to die without seeing my little sister. Um, when my helicopter went down, I knew that I was in severe pain, but, but that I didn't feel it. Sorry, I'm sitting in my wheelchair, so I keep sliding down. Um, like... I knew my leg was messed up. I knew I had a hole in my face. I, I knew there were so many things wrong. But for me, it was just focusing on the future and focusing on seeing the people that I loved and making sure that my guys and gals were okay. Um, but I guess I didn't ever realize that I was in pain because it was, I was so worried about the people around me and what was going on around me. Um, and the moment that I actually got flown into Camp Bastion, to a makeshift hospital and I saw my sergeant major and my gunnery sergeant standing there staring at me and crying. That was the moment that I actually realized that I was going home. It was never, you know, I never once thought because of what happened to me that I was going home, but it was because of people looking at me and saying, you know what, we're pulling the plug on this one and we're sending her home. And that was probably the hardest thing that I've ever faced was the fact that I wasn't going to be able to be there and finish out that deployment. But when the helicopter is going down, are you conscious all the way to impact? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, and in my mind, it was weird because it wasn't like I prayed or panicked. It was just I went into slow motion, and it was just like I would normally land. You know, five, four, three, two, one, mains on deck. And when my mind said mains on deck, 
we hit the ground. And unfortunately, instead of landing like we normally would, it was more so uh, on the left side where I was on the left gun. Now, you've done a lot of unbelievable things, right? You first above the knee amputee to summit Mount Kilimanjaro, right? When you went up with Nate and Chris Long and that crew. <laughs> um, I just think you were trying to get up really fast just to get away from Nate and Chris Long. Uh, <laughs> you were 200 meters from someone in Everest, Everest last year when your oxygen ran out for the whole crew, which you had a chance to go up, obviously, but didn't want to leave your team behind again, which is what you are. You were the fifth ranked snowboarder in the world when I met you. Um, would you have been this great? accomplished if you didn't lose your leg and didn't have all these injuries? No. No, because everything that I've gone through at this point, everything that makes me different, every scar, you know, the fact that I'm missing my leg, the fact that I'm sitting in a wheelchair right now, it made me stronger, it made me tougher. And I promise you, it made me more goddamn resilient than anybody out there on the planet. And you know what? It taught me more about life than anything else could. Because I count my blessings every single day. And even though I feel robbed, I feel robbed of my purpose, my career, my memory, my leg, the whole nine. I, I'm able to like wake up every day and count my blessings. I'm able to literally put one foot in front of the other. All because of my mindset. At the end of the day, it's all because of my head and my heart, not because of what happened to me physically. And the, the, the number of people, that's, you know, you and I talk a lot about being of service to others and certainly you were in the military but you're so much more now and you know, Kirsty's one of my best friends so you guys know so she comes and <laughs> she basically my son's aunt uh she comes in and you know one of my favorite things in life is to help her up and down my stairs and we go to places and the, the little kids who come over and point and stare at your leg and how you bring them in to to explain what's happening with your leg so so you can give them more strength and power. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. Well, I think that's what it's all about. Life's not about me or what I can do for myself anymore. It's about paying it forward and giving back to the communities that we live in. You know, I don't mind doing things the hard way if it means that I can set somebody else up for success. I don't mind people pointing and laughing and, you know, making their jokes or <laughs> any of that if it means that I'm going to set somebody else up for like a happy, healthier, more successful life. I, I'm pretty sure we're in the same boat. I know well, that we're What's the thing you're most proud of? Oh man. Don't give me the cliche answer like, hey, I'm really <laughs> proud, proud to be a, you know, a role model for all the little kids out there. Don't give me that. Give me something you, right now, you were so damn proud of behind your ribcage that even after I tried to kill myself, I turned it around. And thank God you did, right? Like, you and I talk a lot about that. You never know what lies around next Tuesday. No. You and some <laughs> the other ones, right? Yeah. If, uh, if you were successful in taking your own lives, a lot of other people wouldn't be here with us today who you've since saved. And that's for everybody out there, everybody listening to this. And that's why you're so important, because it's going to be our crew. This, this immediate crew right here of, of MVP that talks about it and is able to, to bring this message to the masses that people um, are afraid to talk, especially doodly dudes like me who are always so afraid to talk about the real shit that we all go through. Um, you're gonna save a lot more people after the military than, than you ever did in the military. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I am so proud of everything that I did in the military, but that one chapter, it doesn't dictate what else is going to happen. And don't get me wrong, I was, I was devastated when I got out of the Marine Corps. That's the last thing that I wanted to happen. But I also had no idea that it was going to set me up for so much more. I had no idea that it was going, everything that I went through, all of that suffering, I didn't know it was going to give me this incredible platform to be able to help so many more people. 
Um, so I think that's the biggest thing that all of us, you know, can look at, whether we wanted to get out of the Marine Corps or military um, or stay in. I think there's always a way for us to be able to dig down deep and figure out how else we can serve the communities that we live in. I'm glad, too, that we have this TNT line because so many more people will hear you now. And again, for, for everybody out there, you know, Kirsty and I have done a ton of stuff together and, and interviews. And every time somebody sits down to, to meet with her, I'll say, hey, just going to tell you right now, your life's about to change. And I come walking in there 10 minutes later, whoever the interviewer is, oh, you know, they're crying their eyes out. I said, I told you, your life is about to change, right? And with this, with, with the GNC deal, um, helping you know, spread the word of, of MVP, merging vets and players, that, that your message, this message that, you, that you know, you've helped so many in our room, you know, pull people out of their own shell, if you will, that you're not going to be able to do it more so to the masses. May I, Kay, that's a dream come true for me to be able to have happen for you. Well, I appreciate it. I mean, everything that you've done for me from, from the jump, from the get-go, Jay. I mean, everything from walking into Unbreakable to being a part of MVP and to now what you have going on with the Unbreakable line. Um, a, I'm just incredibly impressed, but even more so, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of it. Um, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Because of this, I will have a much bigger platform, and we can use this to, to impact the masses. This is being able to, to improve, improve the world. We, we're not here to change it, but improve it. <laughs> best, best line I ever saw. Folks, we're sitting in the New York City chapter, um, and Roger Goodell is in there. Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, crying his eyes out because a couple of our MVPers just lost – Oh, man, they lost a couple more this week, K.E., and the, the two seven, the Marines. Uh, one unit is up to, I think, 48 suicides in one unit. And we had a, we were helping to curb it for a little while there. Um, but that week they just lost, I think, their 44th and 42nd. I think it was. And, and you know, the way you were uplifting them, the way we were all talking to them, and, and you know, we were telling them, look, it, it sucks. They'd lost at that point 72 in battle and suicide. But remember, I, I said to them, Roger, think of how strong you have to be to withstand the loss of 72 of your brothers. I couldn't do that. Could you do it? Right, Roger, he's quivering up. <laughs> and then Kirstie, you talk, and all of a sudden, he turns to you, and he grabs you, and he says, hey, you're going to save the world. And you say, no, we're going to improve it. Like out of a fucking movie, Kirstie. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Like, holy shit. It was incredible. But... I mean, it came from the heart. Like everything that we do, it, it comes from the heart. I, I, and I, I speak for us both. Like I know that we're in this to truly do that. Yeah. We're here to take care of one another. We're here to show up for one another. We're here to, to create that community and brotherhood. I mean, I said it when I meant it, and I mean it now. All right, give me a uh, – I meant it when I said it. <laughs> got you. Get, uh, throw a question. Uh, I know we're supposed to go back and forth here. I don't want to hog it all. What question or questions do you have for me? All right. Two part. I had to write it down and everything so I didn't mess it up. But how important was your past in making your present and your future? And what about your past did you have to let go to get to where you are now? Okay. Good. Good questions. For all the TV agents that are watching this right now, call Kirsty this week. <laughs> so my past I, the moment it was really it was it was interesting because when I got around you guys like when I started MVP I knew it like I could coach so for me I was just trying to coach I was just trying to lift people up and I just saw too many football players go by the wayside and I've trained military and you know in MMA and uh, Coop and um, but I was just coaching I, I didn't really get into the vulnerable side of myself until I met you all. And I got you guys to do it. You guys got me to do it. And that's where that whole thing of, like, I've always thought I was fucked up in a, in a bad way. You know, I always thought, I always thought I was a bad person. I was one of those guys, you know, I suffered from depression. So I automatically think life's against me. The sky is falling. And you've been there with me with some of my more manic moments and it 
fucking sucks and you've been there for me. Um, like, so people like you and this team become my antidepressants because God almighty, I've tried every single one of them. They've put me on everything since I was a kid on and none of them have worked. Um, but, you know, the team has and, and um, but I think letting go of me always feeling like I was such a bad human being allow me to blossom more in the present and I still wrestle with it but I think going in the future um, I'm a lot more proud of my resume of life now that makes sense yes well that was a phenomenal answer I don't really give a fuck about my other resume I care about my resume of life I used to latch on more of what I am or who I am and because I just felt so insecure all the time and um, funny, people are like, because I'm sure they're like, oh, you have the Napoleon complex. It's not the Napoleon complex. It's the depression complex. Depression makes you insecure. Me being short, K, you know me. I walk in a room like the biggest motherfucker in that place, right? I will own that fucking thing. I don't care. I, it is not a fucking Napoleon short thing, ever. It's a depression complex that always makes me feel this big. Um, what was the other question? What part of, what was the second part? <laughs> um, uh, which part of your past did you have to let go so that you could uh, like actually embrace No, that was the first part. That was the second part. But then how important was your past in making you oh. who you now? Oh, so that's the other thing. Yeah. And, and in the past, I'm glad that I made a lot of bad decisions. I'm glad I fucked up a lot. I'm glad that, um, yeah, I'm glad I did all it Cause then. When I talk to everybody else, I'd be full of shit. Like, I've been through it. I've been through the dark. I've been through the gray. I've been through trouble. I've made bad decisions. You know what, Katie? What people don't know also, I, like, I, I'm a big faith guy. I believe in God because that's my choice. People out there who don't, I never understood why you try and push it on me that you don't. Like, I, it doesn't hurt you that, I, that I'm a God guy. But I got kicked out of my first college, right, after a semester and a half with a whopping 0.00 GPA. I went down, there's Westchester University of Pennsylvania. I went down so I could stop doing Jersey Shore things because I was living in Jersey. And at one point I forgot that I wasn't Italian. I thought I was, you know. So <laughs> at one point I forgot, I, I'm, fuck, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm not even Italian. And I got kicked out of school. I went back, started doing Jersey things. And I met with a, a famous boxing trainer in a tailor shop in Secaucus, New Jersey, it was part of a crime family, and I signed on to box for them. And the day before my first ever practice, I'm walking up the street in Jersey, and literally like a lightning bolt hit me. And it was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? This, this is not who you are. You're not going to go, don't, you're not going to go box for the fucking Genovese crime family. What are you doing? And... I never showed up to practice. And I left my hometown, moved to New York City, and made the decision to change what I thought was cool. I used to think it was cool to be a shithead um, because I felt like such a bad person. I kept going down that road myself. I kept putting myself in that road more and more and more. Um, had I not made the decision to not go that day, A lot of lives would have, would have been different. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have been able to hear because, look, I know I've saved you, you know, and you, your, your fourth amputation. You were, you were, you were done. You were asking me to go, and I was like, no, can't do it. Right? I was hosting the UFC out of Madison Square Garden, and you're sending me. And you're like, I'm done. I'm like, you can't do it, Kirsty. We need you, right? And if I wasn't here, and to build this team, who all of us were texting you like, no, you can't go. You've got to be there. Then, um, God Almighty, I'm just glad I, I made the decision to not show up to practice that day. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have been here for a lot of y'all. Mm. And y'all wouldn't have been here for me moving forward. And, you know, you know that same pollen that was in the Rocks house last week, is, it's out here, too. It's pretty bad, yeah. Same pollen. It's just pollen. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, man. I mean, what you've created, what Nate's created, what MVP, I mean, the whole nine's created. I mean, it really is beautiful. At the end of the day, we can all look back and say we're proud of what we've done or what we did um, and look forward and say, you know what, we're going to still keep trucking on for each other. And yeah, you're damn right. If you didn't make that choice back then, you wouldn't be here. If I didn't make those choices back then, I wouldn't be here for you. So I think um, when it's all said and done, you know, the hell that we've all walked through makes us better, better people in the end. And I'm grateful for it. I'm, I'm going to switch gears here for you. Again, to all our people there, the Dan Pollen. In Scottsdale. Is <laughs> your favorite sports person you've met in all our time together? Again, I take Kirsty with me to fucking everything. I had her walk in one time. She gave a speech to the Saints, and she walked up there. I'm gonna out you right here. She walked up there. Right? What was your opening line? Tell everybody. Do you remember uh, it? Kirsty Ennis, and I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the language. I don't know who's out there, but. <laughs> That was her line, and I'm getting texts from inside the Saints meeting room like, who the fuck did you send us? Yep, that's Kirstie Ennis, and she's a bad motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite? What's your favorite? You've met a lot of people in sports and Hollywood through me. At, at us traveling or at Unbreakable. Uh, Who's your favorite? No, that's so hard. I don't like that question, Jay. <laughs> I don't like it. Right, who do you, who do you, um, what do you brag about the most to like your friends or family that you that like they affected you? Is this a trick question? No, there's a bunch of them though. I just well, I'm gonna have to. Well, it's gonna be like a few people. I'm gonna have to say the long family. I mean, don't get me wrong, Jay, you're you're up there, but I'm gonna have to say <laughs> the family because Howie's involved in some funny stories. Chris is involved in some funny stories. One might involve radio. You've seen me and Kyle oh. fight. Yeah. <laughs> what? You've seen me and Kyle go at it in the oh, gym. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> well, I remember, wait, wait. At the Super Bowl, you were pretty damn stoked. We, I asked Joe Montana to come down to meet you. And then he got us both sick. Yes, absolutely. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was sick. He got us sick. Like, come on, Joe. Uh, love Joe Montana. Stallone and you got a little, had a little bond going. You and Wiz uh, Khalifa. Well, well, That's Wiz Khalifa is definitely my favorite, but you said athlete, yeah. I'm pretty sure, to be clear. And then you and Demi got pretty close, too. And Demi, yes. Right. I wish you yeah. were here sometime soon. <laughs> it's cool, though, when you, as you start moving up in your career, how many of them, because we met you, you weren't doing any of this stuff yet. And how many of them were like, oh, my, it's like all these really uber famous people seeing your growth and they feel like they're walking this walk with you. But it's pretty cool. They start fanning out on you. Well, and to be fair, I mean, I think that's the beautiful thing about MVP. I mean, because we're bringing these veterans in um, to the huddle and we're also bringing these athletes into the huddle and the veterans are looking at the athletes like, oh, my God, these are our heroes since, you know, we've been children. But on the flip side, these athletes are looking at the veterans like they're their heroes. Um, for, for me, that's beautiful. Uh, and and would I have what I have right now without MVP and what we've done thus far? Absolutely not. But I think like at the very core of what we're doing with MVP, like that's what this is. We're bringing people together. We're build, building community and introducing people that would have never known each other from the get go, um, and using those stories to inspire one another, to motivate one another. What's the best practical joke you've played with your leg? Oh, God. <laughs> um, and by the way, just for everybody out there, you're like, why is Glazer asking this? I embarrass Kirsty all the time. Practical joke? Shit to Kirsty on TV that's like inside jokes, which we won't say here. On TV, live, and she'll look at me like, are you out of your mind? Like, yeah, definitely, right? I, Gosh, I don't even know if I've played a practical joke with my leg. <laughs> I mean, my favorite thing for any veterans out there is called shoot the boot. So there's a challenge. Um, <clears throat> who can drink a beer the fastest out of my leg? It's <laughs> um, not really a practical joke, but that's probably my favorite thing that happens for sure. Shoot the boot. Anybody out there, I challenge you to it. Okay. Shoot the boot. Okay. Mm -hmm. mine, mine, well, it wasn't a joke, but we were at uh, 
it was a fright night and the zombie came out. Oh, so that wasn't a practical joke either. I know it wasn't. But a zombie comes out and like, ah, and knocks into us and Kirsty's leg turns around. And instead of most people, they'd be really afraid when a zombie jumps out. She turns around and starts motherfucking this zombie. And yet, fucking zombie just knocked into us and turned my leg around. And this poor zombie's like, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. No. Not. Oh. No, there's, there's been some good stuff, though. We've had some good laughs. We really have. We've had some good laughs. Uh, we've had, like I said, the, the moment you walked into our gym that first time, and we boxed for first day ever. We boxed. Uh, it's a day that changed my life forever. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like, that brought back so many different things for me. As far as being able to sit with my emotions, as far as aggression and frustration and anger and everything that happened to me, that provided me a whole new therapy. I mean, everything from dropping bows on people to throw in my first <laughs> cup. No, that was, that was really cool. <laughs> and you do, you drop those elbows great. No, yeah. I even left California and I was like seeking out new trainers in the whole nine. I was like, <laughs> how do I carry this outward? Like, I mean, I was convinced for a little while there that I was actually going to take a fight <laughs> at yeah. one point. And if you wanted to do, I'm sure you would, and I'm sure you'd win. That's it. <laughs> Wait, at one point, Ava Knight had talked me. <laughs> you must have gotten in Ava's ear because at one point she talked to me also. Like, hey, I think Kirsty wants to get a fight. You know, I could train her. I could just stay with her all the time and train her. I was like, whoa, whoa, let's, let, let's, hey, let's you want right here a little bit. So you must have fucking talked to her at some point about that. Yep, you want to write history, you tell Ava. You tell Ava that I want to fight. That can be my coach. I love we have a guy in here right now, Jose Acuna, he's telling us to shut up, yet he's on my Instagram live. It's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Jose, keep on keeping on. Uh, it. I'm just going to call you out if you're on my Instagram live and saying stupid shit here. Well, ignore him, because anyways, everybody's brave behind a keyboard. Yeah, they are. Face. Mm. I won't feel good. Oh my God! Hey, um, are, do you have a, you have a team that you're a fan of? NFL team? The Saints all day. <laughs> <laughs> because of when you went and talked to them, or before that? Uh before that. I mean, I'm from the Panhandle of Florida, um, but even now, like I spoke to them, and the, you know, back then. But Sean Payton has turned into a good friend. I've met his daughter. I love that team. I love what they do. I love what they represent. So, yeah, um, through and through the Saints. But you never told me you were a Saints fan. We had, hold on a sec. You were a Saints fan beforehand, and you never said anything when I said, hey, I got to say, you want to go talk to the Saints? You never said anything. No. But, Jay, you knew that Sean brought my grandpa out to a game after that. Yes, that I knew after, but I didn't know beforehand. <laughs> well, no. Well, definitely, if I had to pick a team from the get-go, it would have been the Saints. Second, close second would have been the Cowboys. I don't like to admit that, though, because it's embarrassing. <laughs> well now you have Alda Smith who's over there who's yes. how great was that feature we did with him right like you've yeah. been around Alden that was the that was a different Alden right he was really vulnerable in that that was beautiful it was yeah. amazing. and really we need more of that because we're not perfect none of us are perfect and I love being able to show the whole triumph over tragedy or even just post-traumatic growth those are the stories that we need right now um, you know what he he made a mistake, and guess what? That comeback was amazing. And yeah. we back, so I loved it. The, uh, what it really shows is, you know, for all of us, it doesn't matter how many chances, like, it's never too late to change your life. And, and for a guy like that, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, why'd you give him another chip, man? Again, I felt like I, I was such a fuck up growing up. Um, if I didn't give myself another chance, I wouldn't be here. So we all, we all need to give each other and others a break, another chance, because it's never too late to change. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, well, I love you. I appreciate you joining me. Um, I'm going to give you uh, Champions of Legends CB, uh, CBD cream that I love. It has helped me with so much shit. So I'm going to send it to you uh, as a result of, uh, of coming on my glass with Glazer. 
And again, everybody out there, we have our own GNC. I don't know if you can see it. Unbreakable GNC line. You go into any GNC or GNC.com, you'll see Kirsty's poster up there. And, uh, you know, they will, they're going to ask people also to, to round up the, the nearest dollar to uh, help uh, add to the coffers of MVP so we can expand out our reach. And it was, by the way, it was great. When we did our, our, our Alden feature last week, I think we got 3,500 hits on the website and at least 35 or 40 new veteran sign-ups uh, and a couple athletes as well. So we just got to, you know, Katie, as you know, we started this in my damn living room. And now look what it's become because of the will that we have behind our rib cage, right? That's it. We got to keep it going. Absolutely. Same. Let me up again. Where's okay. Coop? Is Coop over there? Uh, he's by the fireplace, by the alligator now. Okay, well, Katie, I miss you. Adio. <laughs> Do you see the alligator? Yeah, I see the alligator. Do you see the dog? Coop! <laughs> Coop! The other <laughs> Coop is the coolest thing out there. Coop's job was to prevent you from, if you fell over, to catch you, right? Yeah, to help me back up. He, well, his main job was to fly with me. So that way, I got into an aircraft that I would be okay. Um, he'd go into houses and he'd clear them. I mean, that was a few years ago now. Now he's just my big fat dog that lays in front of a fireplace next to an alligator. <laughs> I don't even know what you say about me when I'm not with you, but thanks. Uh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, I love you with all my heart. All right. I love yeah. you, too. Thanks for everything that you sign off here? You're not a sign-off over here? Yeah. We couldn't figure it out. Uh, let me see. There we go. Better me, then, if you can't figure it out. Let me see if I can get you here. And I'll take some <laughs> football questions here coming up here.